So this is a PowerPoint presentation I made for Florida Defenders of the Environment uh, to present to their board meeting. And I just wanted to um, state our mission statement, which is working to protect freshwater resources, conserve public lands, and provide quality environmental education since 1960. Uh, this presentation is about the Sable Trail Pipeline. The pipeline will run 515 miles from Alabama through Georgia and Florida. It will connect to the Southeast Pipeline just above Orlando, which is also currently under construction. It will run through and damage 700 water bodies, including wetlands, rivers, and springs. Some of these areas will not recover from the construction for 20 to 50 years. At least four compressor stations will be positioned along the line to keep pushing the gas through, and several auxiliary pipelines will connect in certain areas. Compressor stations are a source of air and noise pollution. Residents in these areas could experience health risks and the uncertainty of living within explosion and incineration zones. Now, FPL and Duke Energy say they need this gas to run new power plants. Florida Power and Light said in Martin County they will use solar during the day and gas at night. Many people, including Ted Yoho, believe we need this gas at night because they haven't heard of alternative sources for nighttime power, like batteries, wind turbines, molten salts, and others. Many people also don't know that our landfills produce a major source of methane that can be harnessed and used as fuel. You can look up trash to gas on Google to learn more about that effort. Uh, this is a document we received from Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League that talks more about the compressor station, uh, air pollution, explosions and fires and a lot of the um, negative health effects for people in the areas within uh, certain areas living near these compressor stations. You could read more about that if you like. This is one of the latest maps for the Sable Trail Pipeline. Uh, I like this one because it shows the Sable Trail line coming through and the chopped green path there. Uh, it also shows the connection of the Southeast uh, Pipeline. And it shows existing pipelines that are already running through. Like in the yellow, these are much smaller pipelines. And there's also one coming in through the Gulf in the blue. Uh, which already connects to FPL. So we already have major sources of gas coming in. But as you see on this map, we have in red all these new LNG export terminal facilities coming online. These are currently in the process of being permitted. Some already are permitted. Uh, some are under construction. But this is for export, folks. This is to export this excess of natural gas coming into our state it will be turned into liquefied natural gas and shipped all over the world. This is the latest facility we learned about, the Strom Crystal River liquid, liquidation plant. It will be the main facility to liquefy natural gas for transport. Located five miles away from the shipping substation, the liquidation facility will be linked directly to the natural gas pipeline and will have an output of 30,000 gallons a day in phase one and 450,000 uh, gallons a day in phase two. So one of the main concerns here with these facilities, of course, could be lightning. Uh, this natural gas needs to be kept at extremely low temperatures so that it doesn't combust. And they also plan to ship it. So as you can see here, we have a manatee. Um, manatees frequent Crystal River area. One of the largest populations of manatees lives in Crystal River. 
So this is an older graph of the export facilities that are trying to get permission uh, to export LNG from the United States. You can see that it will be exported out of the Port of Miami, Port Everglades, Port of Palm Beach, Port of Jacksonville, Port Canaveral, Port of Tampa, and the Port of Pensacola. So this reminds us of a few years ago with all the big uh, push to uh, expand our ports. This is one of the reasons for expanding the ports, to bring these big ships that can carry the LNG. There's two in Indian Town, one in Titusville, one in Hialeah, and of course there's one in Jacksonville, and the newest one we added to the list is Strom Crystal River. I've received documents um, and collecting information for a couple of years now. This is just one document I decided to share, uh, which shows some Michael uh, uh, Strasser from Sutherland Corporation uh, to the United States Department of Energy, uh, requesting Carib Energy's permission to export liquefied natural gas. And if you see here, they have attached a $50 check for the fee to the U.S. Department of Treasury to cover the filing fee. Just imagine, it only cost them $50 to send these requests for permits. Imagine if your company had a lot of money, they could just send hundreds of these a day and waiting for a few to be rubber stamped. But I pulled some other things from the document. I can show you on this next slide. The source of natural gas supply to be exported by Carib will be the robust and liquid United States natural gas market. Specifically, Carib will be purchasing LNG from the facilities which have and expect to continue to have an excess supply of LNG. That's right, expected continued excess supply. So there's really not a need for this pipeline except for to allow these companies to ship it. And also from the document, uh, there was uh, a segment about public interest. And it's uh, the Department of Energy and um, federal uh, regulatory agency must grant such an application unless opponents of the application overcome that presumption by making an affirmative showing of inconsistency with public interest. So far, I don't see how any of this is in the public interest. It appears to be all for shipping to other countries. Also in the document, it points out that in addition to the DOE, FE considers any threat to the security of domestic natural gas supplies potentially created by the proposed export as well as whether the arrangement is consistent with the DOE FE's policies of promoting market competition and any other factors bearing on the public's interest, including environmental effects of the proposed export. So it appears that there is there may be some grounds to be able to stop this if we can approve no public interest and the huge environmental effects that could be facing us with this pipe. FPL and Duke say they need this glass, gas to supply electricity. But John Quarterman from Walls and Spectre Busters did some digging into FPL's own documents where FPL admits no need for new electricity until 2024. So why the Sable Trail Pipeline? Some say to replace the coal-fired power plants. But FPL admitted only 3.9% of electricity is coming from coal. How could 3.9% of FPL's energy needs have justified an increase of 50% in incoming fracked methane? This new pipeline could push solar, wind, and other renewable energy sources back 20 to 50 years. Which brings me to eminent domain. Several landowners, Florida and Georgia, 
report being offered $1,400 for their land loss. If they cash the check, they will not be able to sue for any further possible damage. If they refuse the check, the company takes their land and starts construction anyway. Doesn't matter, from what we've seen, it doesn't matter how much land uh, you have that's being used for this pipeline, most people are still getting just $1,400. James and Robert Bell own 100 acres of land in Mitchell County, Georgia. They lost the eminent domain case against Sable Trail, which got a piece of their land to build the pipeline. The brothers countersued for trespassing, saying Sable Trail contractors went on their land without consent. The brothers also lost that case, and Sable Trail was awarded $47,000 in legal fees for defending the trespassing accusation which the judge ordered the brothers to pay to the company, which is unbelievable. And climate change. Natural gas or methane is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide over the 100 year time span. We know these pipelines leak. In fact, the EPA cites infrastructure issues as the largest contributor to methane emissions in the United States. In addition to blocking out the renewable sector in the Sunshine State, this pipeline has the potential to directly contribute to climate change in an epic proportion. As the main line for these new power plants, compressor stations, and frack gas export facilities. Export versus power generation. Well, Florida is now facing five newly proposed liquefied natural gas export facilities. One of these has already directly claimed that it will be purchasing from the proposed Sable Trail Pipeline. That is the Strom LNG facility that I showed you in the diagrams before. These export facilities show that the proposed Sable Trail Pipeline would only lead to further natural gas infrastructure along the coast, not to meet the energy needs of Florida, but for international exports. Many environmentalists agree that if this is allowed, it will bring fracking to Florida on shore and off. This is a great new map that uh, someone put together for us. It uh, shows the blue line coming through as the Sable Trail Pipeline. It also shows these little circles as first and second magnitude springs. Be running right through the heart of springs of our Springs Heartland, uh, also through prone sinkhole area, and running right over our entire aquifer. What could possibly go wrong? This is really, really dangerous. Sable Trail running through many springs, rivers, and karst sinkhole territory. The construction alone could collapse the foulmouth cave systems. The path runs through Swanee Rivers, Lime Spring Run and is dangerously close to Rainbow Springs. We don't want this stuff in our drinking water, folks, and ruining our beautiful springs. It's also going to run through a part of Marjorie Harris Cars Cross Florida Greenway State Recreation and Conservation Area. Many people have fought long and hard to put some of these areas in conservation in honor of Marjorie's Cars work to stop the Cross Florida Barge Canal. You can see here on this diagram, this map, uh, running in through horizontally here, this red line coming in from the left and shooting off to the bottom right corner, uh, running through wetlands. These green areas are wetlands. And uh, this could do a lot of damage to this area. On either side of this pipeline has to be cleared 50 to 100 feet. Trees and everything, everything just goes. Just like this. The pathways will be completely cleared 50 to 100 foot wide throughout the state. And this photo sees where, this shows where um, construction has already started. Construction's been started in several areas of Florida. This photo is North Florida. 
near the Swanee River. It shows the huge pipe and the clear path, and the workers out there. This is a great photo of Swanee River State Park's Lime Sink Run, which runs into the Swanee River. This is a photo from Travis Marquez. This beautiful area may be destroyed by the crossing of the Sable Trail Pipeline. And the Donellan area. This is a photo here, West Virginia in 2012, where a pipeline ruptured. The Donellan area is getting hit hard. The pipeline would run behind high school, the elementary school, and right through neighborhoods. If you're within 100 miles of this pipeline, oh, I'm sorry, within one mile of the pipeline, FERC considers you to be inside the explosion zone. If you're within a thousand feet, it's considered that you are inside the incineration zone. That's right, folks, the incineration zone. You'll be gone in an instant, turn to ash. Also, they're going to bore under the Withlacoochee River near Rainbow Springs, the Santa Fe River, Swanee River, and Foulmouth Caves and Springs. <coughs> Excuse me. The fire departments all through Florida have reported they do not have the means to fight these fires. They must be left to burn themselves out. Now, I have said earlier that I've received information from many different uh, people trying to stop this pipeline from coming through Florida and Georgia. So I could go on all day and give you all kinds of facts and figures, but I don't have the time right now. So I'll ask the question, what can we do? What can we do to stop this? What would Marjorie do? As you know, Marjorie worked long and hard to stop the boondoggle of the cross Florida barge canal. Most people thought it was too late. It was already permitted. There was nothing they could do. Marjorie didn't believe that. She assembled a group of scientists and lawyers and interested people, uh, biologists, and she fought it and she won. She stopped it. What would she do about this Sable Trail pipeline? I think Marjorie would definitely be fighting to stop it. What can we do? Thanks.